you're struggling to understand why some people are vaccine hesitant. Let me help you. Imagine you're a normal person. The year 2016. Rightly or wrongly, you believe most of what you see in the media. You believe polls are broadly reflective of public opinion. You believe doctors and scientists are trustworthy and independent. You're a decent, reasonable person who follows the rules and trusts authority. Imagine you're shocked then when Brexit, which you were assured won't happen because it's a fringe movement led by racists for racists, happens. The polls, which widely predicted it wouldn't happen, were completely wrong. The experts and media pundits who told you it wouldn't happen day after day, also wrong. Oh well, you say, these things happen. Imagine that soon after Donald Trump is running for president. You are told by your favorite media publications that he is going to lose. Some experts say his opponent has a 99% chance of winning. Imagine waking up on the morning after the election to discover that pollsters, media experts, and politicians you still trusted were wrong yet again. And now, the racist monster they told you would never get near the White House is the leader of the free world. How did this happen, you ask yourself? How could all the people in charge of informing me be so wrong? It was the Russians, they tell you. The Russians did Brexit. They got Trump elected too. Imagine that for the next three and a half years, you watch as the media and the political class run with the Russia collusion narrative. They tell you the how, when, and where. The dossiers, the whistleblowers, the peeing prostitutes. Imagine your desperation for things to make sense again. The Mueller report is coming and it will set your world straight. Evidence of foreign meddling in the 2016 election and Brexit is coming to save your unsettled mind. Imagine your shock then when you discover that Brexit and Trump had little to do with foreign meddling. The screaming about Russians and Brexit dies down as well. Imagine that bit by bit you discover that events which the media and the political class told you would not and could not not only happened, but happened without some sort of evil interference. Instead, millions of your fellow citizens voted for them. Again, you ask, how could this happen? And again, the media answer, racism. Your country is racist, they tell you. If you're white, this seems strange to you. Other than a handful of idiots, you've never met a racist. If you're an ethnic minority immigrant like me, this seems even stranger. Why would people in one of the most welcoming, tolerant countries in the world want to convince themselves their country is racist when it's so obviously not? But the evidence is right there on your TV screen. Imagine your horror as a gay black actor is assaulted by MAGA hat wearing thugs who racially abuse him and put a noose around his neck. He cries while talking about it. Imagine your outrage as you see news reports of a bunch of MAGA hat wearing kids from a religious school contemptuously confront a Native American elder. Reza Aslan tells you the kid has a punchable face, and while you abhor violence, it's difficult to disagree. Imagine that for days you watch coverage of these events with expert after expert, pundit after pundit, sharing and fueling your outrage about them. With every word, your belief that you are a good person and that your country is a good country wavers. Imagine that soon after, however, the Jesse Smollier story turns out to be an attention-seeking hoax. Imagine that you quickly discover that the Native American elder was the one who confronted the kids and not the other way around. If this is such a racist country, you ask yourself, why would they need to make up stories of racism? As you ponder this, 
you remember that for years now, you've been expected to go along with other make-believe. You're expected to believe that whether you're male or female is not as simple as you once thought. Whatever you learned about biology at school is wrong. You no longer know how many genders there are, and it seems dangerous to try to find out. Imagine reading that the experts at the American Psychological Association say that traditional masculinity is pathological and harmful. Imagine that you still want to believe the media and their experts, but now that requires you to think your country is racist, men are bad, and gender is a social construct, whatever that means. It is at this point that a pandemic emerges on the other side of the world. You are initially unconcerned, but as scenes emerge from Italy and other countries, it is clear that something big is taking place. You watch nervously as politicians give press conference after press conference after press conference, flanked by experts to explain the situation. The racist Donald Trump shuts down travel from China. In response, the mayor of Florence advises citizens to fight racism by hugging a Chinese person. Shortly after, Nancy Pelosi, a respected Democrat, visits Chinatown in San Francisco to explain there's no reason tourists or locals should be staying away from the area because of coronavirus concerns. Thank God there are some sensible, non-racist people who aren't overreacting, you say to yourself. Imagine watching as Trump doubles down on his racism by claiming the virus may have come from a lab in Wuhan. Nonsense, you think to yourself as you wonder how to best protect your family and your friends from this deadly disease. You consider getting masks. You've seen visitors from Asian countries wear them. But the UK's chief medical officers tell you not to wear a mask and wash your hand instead. As lockdowns are introduced around the world, you diligently follow all the rules. You stay at home. You only go out once in a long, long while and live off of savings or government grants. You are proud to be doing your part. Thanks to you and millions of your fellow citizens, the first wave of the pandemic does not overwhelm the healthcare system. While thousands sadly die, you've helped protect the NHS. Imagine your confusion as the same people who have spent three months telling you masks don't work and you shouldn't wear them introduce mask mandates. We're following the science, they tell you. This makes little sense, but a pandemic has no time for questions. As you cautiously go to the supermarket, you notice that masks have made people far less likely to socially distance. You remember reading somewhere that bicycle helmets work similarly. They give the wearer more confidence and the result is more accidents and injuries, not fewer. Silly people, you say to yourself, if only they would follow government advice. You turn on your TV and learn that shoppers at your local supermarket aren't the only ones who have been ignoring the rules. Neil Ferguson, the man whose projections were used as the basis for lockdowns, appears to have broken his own rules to get some action with his married lover. Boris Johnson's chief advisor, Dominic Cummings, drove halfway across the country to ensure he had a better place to isolate. The journalists who berate him for this are later found to have attended a birthday party in breach of the rules. In the United States, Mayor of Chicago Lori Lightfoot contradicts her own edict to get a haircut so that she could look good, as if that was possible. Gavin Newsom of California goes to a $1,000 a plate dinner at the French Laundry, unmasked, then lies about it, then claims he was, in fact, wearing a mask, only to have pictures contradict his, quote, truth-telling. The lockdown continues. However, a man is killed in Minneapolis while being arrested for a petty crime. The man is black, the officer is white. 
the arrest is captured on video and quickly goes viral around the world. Imagine your horror as you watch an officer of the law kneel on another man's neck until he passes out and later dies. This is disgusting, you say to yourself. I hope they throw the book at him. Overnight, a huge campaign for racial justice springs up around the world. No one explains what racism had to do with the incident, but they don't need to. As you know by now, the West is racist, and therefore any time a white person does anything bad to a black person, there can only be one explanation. The fact that an identical incident happened to a white man called Tony Tempa is never mentioned for context. While the lockdown remains in place, the protest against injustice spills out onto the streets. Tens of thousands of people crowd into major cities. Few wear masks and social distancing is non-existent. Classes with police ensue. And in America, protesters loot stores, attack residents, and start fires. A retired black police officer named David Dorn is among dozens of people who are murdered in the chaos. The media describe these events as mostly peaceful protests, as their reporters stand in front of burning buildings after months of harsh restrictions. The media and political class offer no criticism of protests, which violate every element of lockdowns. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful and peaceful. After months of telling you to stay at home and to avoid spreading COVID, doctors explain that rather than being a mass COVID spreading event, protest is a profound public health intervention. Big tech companies go into overdrive to stop the spread of disinformation. All discussions of alternative viewpoints regarding the efficacy of masks and lockdowns, as well as the origins of the virus are censored. Attempts to discuss the negative impact of lockdown on health and mental well-being are suppressed. As the year runs on, with a pivotal American election looming, President Trump promises a huge push to develop a vaccine. Kamala Harris, who is later elected vice president, says that she would not take the vaccine if Trump told her to. If Donald Trump tells us I should that we should take it, I'm not taking it. The fact that you continue to undermine public confidence in a vaccine, if the vaccine emerges during the Trump administration, I think is, is unconscionable. On the eve of election, a publication in America releases a damaging report about Hunter Biden, son of presidential candidate Joe Biden. The story alleges corruption, which may involve his father, as well as drug taking, use of prostitutes, and more. Twitter and other social media companies prevent the stories from being shared. The media lines up commentators to claim the story was Russian disinformation. Once his father wins the election, it becomes clear that several key elements of the story are likely accurate and the laptop from which the information was recovered is in fact Hunter Biden's laptop. And for weeks, this very credibly sourced article right before an election uh, about Hunter Biden was was banned by Twitter. Yeah, we, we made a total mistake with New York Post. We, we corrected. Meanwhile, the number of COVID patients and death turns out to have been wrong. For some time, anyone who died at any point after a positive COVID test was counted as dying of COVID, even if they were killed by a drunk driver. This figure is later revised again. The number of people who are in hospital because of COVID also turns out to be incorrect. Now that racist Donald Trump is no longer president, closing borders is no longer considered xenophobic and is widely advocated for in the media. The racist conspiracy that the virus came from a lab is now allowed to be discussed and appears likely to be the most credible explanation of the origins of the virus. Imagine your horror as you learn that the reason thousands of people died in the first wave of the pandemic was that elderly patients with COVID were allowed to be released back into care homes. This is especially true in the UK and in New York, run by Governor Andrew Cuomo, brother of CNN anchor Chris Cuomo. Governor Cuomo's publisher suspends promotion of his book about leadership during the pandemic amid the inquiry into nursing home deaths. 
Meanwhile, Texas and Florida, which remained open, continue to thrive. In the UK, the health secretary, the person responsible for saving lives, is found to be cheating on his own wife with a married aide in the breach of social distancing rules. The man making the rules for you does not follow them. It is at this point that the vaccine, which you were initially told would need to be given to the vulnerable before restrictions are lifted, becomes the main drive of government policy and media commentary. The same people who told you Brexit would never happen, Trump would never win, that when he did win it was because of Russian collusion, then because of racism, that you must follow lockdowns while they don't, that masks don't work and then they, they do work, that protests during lockdowns are a health intervention, that ransacking black communities in the name of fighting racism are mostly peaceful, that Jesse Smollier was a victim of a hate crime, that men are toxic, that there are an infinite number of genders, that COVID didn't come from a lab, and then that it probably did, that closing borders is racist, and then that it's the most important thing to do, that the Hunter Biden story is Russian disinformation, and then that it's not, that they would not take Trump's vaccine, and then you must take the vaccine, that Governor Cuomo is a great COVID leader, and then he's a granny killer. That the number of COVID deaths is one thing and then another. That the hospitals are filled with COVID patients, and then that many of them caught COVID in the hospital. These are the same people now telling you the vaccine is safe. You must take it. And if you don't, you will be a second class citizen. Understand vaccine hesitancy now? Peace and blessings, everybody. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and thumb it up either way. Thumb up.